talked about the Disconnect, and I and I should have had this book at the time. It completely slipped my mind until afterwards. I thought, oh, I would love to have had a quote from this book, which I'm now holding up. It's called Woman at Point Zero by an Egyptian woman called Noal El Sadawi. Now, this was written in 1973, and the author was a psychologist, and she used to go into prisons and talk to women. And the story is based on a real an event, but she may have added to it, where a woman, the night before she was executed, she'd killed a man, told her story, and it led to this being written down. I'm just going to quote from it. I read about a ruler who had many servants as numerous as his army, another ruler whose only interest in life were wine women and whipping his slaves, a third enjoyed wars, killing and torturing men, another ruler loved food, money and hoarding riches without end, another was possessed with such an admiration for himself and his greatness that for him no one else in the land ever existed. Also a ruler so obsessed with plots and conspiracies that he spent all his time distorting the facts of history and trying to fool his people. I discovered that all these rulers were men. What they had in common was an avaricious and distorted personality, a never-ending appetite for money, sex and unlimited power. Men who sowed corruption on the earth and plundered their peoples. Men endowed with loud voices a capacity for persuasion for choosing sweet words and shooting poisoned arrows. Thus, the truth about them was revealed only after their deaths. And as a result, I discovered that history tended to repeat itself with a foolish obstinacy. Wouldn't you think that was written today? Sounds very much like every politician I know of. So my point being, that was written in 1970s. If you're living eternally... You're going to be coming across this year after year after year after... And how tedious would that be? I can see why there's a trope in these kind of things. That If you live forever, you end up living in somewhere obscure that no one can find you. You've had enough of people and the tide of life and you just want to get off. I can totally understand that. So as I say, there'd have to be a number of caveats that I stuck around my living forever. It would be at the peak of my physical prowess. When was that? <laughs> ever? Ever, one would ask? Ever? And I'd have to be, as I say, very fit and capable. Uh, I wouldn't want to be, I wouldn't personally want to be aging at all. I would want to be stuck at the age that I decided that I would be stuck at. I would want the ability to be able to move and travel and not stay in the same place because I think that's the way that you do with it. You're right. Nothing's changed, though. So I think that it would be quite disappointing. Nothing has changed. What was going on hundreds of thousands of years ago is still going on today. What drives and motivates people still drives and motivates people today. It's exactly the same thing. It's only enhanced these days with a degree of technological expertise that the ancients didn't have in the same way that we have. I think they still had a lot of technological expertise that we don't appreciate. And I think that they were far wiser and far smarter than we give them the credit for. Yeah. But I think that nothing has changed. Money, sex and power are the motivating factors of, of so much stuff. And then there's a general consensus that it's about what you can make for yourself and for your family, for your tribe. And I don't yeah. think that's really changed over the years. And it just goes around and the wheel goes round and, and that's that. So it would probably be quite dull after a time because you'd realise that nothing actually changes. But I'd be interested, like I say, to see how the mistakes are repeated year after year after year because people fail to understand what happened in the past. 